of basketball means more here in Indiana, right? It first came here back in the late 1800s. And since then, countless stars have come from the Hoosier hardwood, rather. Fox 59's Birchelle Edmay shows us Indiana's basketball history. Yes, there's March Madness, but Indiana has always been crazy about hoops, and our love of the game molded this sport. This evening, I'm exploring how the ball dribbled into our court back in 1894 and why basketball's history truly starts at the crossroads of America. It's rhythmic. Every bounce against the hardwood. It's artistic. Every silhouette with the perfect arc. It's electric. Every stadium after the buzzer beater. And in 49 states, it's just basketball. But this is Indiana. Just drive around any part of Indiana and you, you'll see basketball goals attached to barns, telephone poles in driveways and cul-de-sacs. <laughs> Indiana, the cradle of basketball. That's what Dr. James Naismith called the Hoosier State after watching an Indiana game of the sport he invented. Naismith's first players were Y staff like Nicholas McKay, who in 1894 brought basketball and its peach basket to his hometown, Crawfordsville. After the first game in Crawfordsville, there, there were several um, newspaper reporters that covered that game. And one of them wrote, if the turnout tonight is any indication this sport has the potential to really be something. And, you know, we've often said that's the greatest understatement of the world in terms of sports. All roads lead back to Indiana for the biggest advancements in basketball. The national popularity of high school state tournaments started in 1911 in Indiana, leading to Hoosier hysteria. All across the country there was basketball, but addicts, something special. America's first all-black state champion in any sport was the Crispus Attucks High School from Indy. Right before that, America's underdog story of the year, the Milan Miracle. Champions cutting the net? Yeah, that's us too. Started with Frankfurt High School coach Everett Case. He brought the Hoosier tradition to March Madness. Bill Garrett puts the game on ice. The first black player to integrate Big Ten basketball, I use Bill Garrett. The craze of basketball sneakers, Indiana's own Chuck Taylor and arguably the most historic basketball gym, Butler's Hinkle Fieldhouse, built in 1928. For a kid like me growing up, that state tournament was the thing you really latched on to and the reason you love basketball. It's played right here at Butler and it's sold out and there's all these cheerleaders and pomp and circumstance. Part of the aura of Indiana basketball is the gym sizes are built bigger than the towns so that people can come watch those, those kids play. The Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame preserves the sport's Hoosier history. The grassroots in high school basketball. Executive director Matt Martin walks through these halls showing me how Hoosier high school MVPs elevated the sport's popularity. You know, it might be a team of five, six, or seven. But the, the town rallied around those individuals because that's what they did on a Friday night or a Saturday night. Um, you know, town would shut down, they'd go to the local diner before the game, then go watch the boys play basketball. Those players' banners now hang in the rafters. They became college all-stars like Indiana State's Larry Bird or IU's Isaiah Thomas. Eventually, Hinkle would be home to the national college tournaments too, then home court to Indianapolis's national basketball team, the ABA Pacers, where again, the Hoosier State would set the tone. Guys love to play against the Pacers here because there was a crowd. You know, they might play in front of 2,000 people somewhere else, but they play in front of eight or 9,000 people here. The ABA franchise became one of the most successful, impacting integration in Indiana itself. When hoops are in your DNA, it's no surprise you make big plays like that. As the saying goes in the Hoosier State, we grow basketball here. As we showed you, a small group of men brought this sport to the Hoosier State, and soon after, women started to dominate basketball, too. And we are seeing a new rise of women in hoops, like players. Caitlin Clark, the presumed number one pick for the draft, likely headed to the Indiana Fever. And she has had a team of Hoosier legends set her up for this play. We're talking to Mika Catchings, four-time Olympian and a Hall of Famer who played with the Indiana Fever. Lisa Williams Burgess, the Carmel All-Star, who went on to dominate as a Gamecock. Or Tara Johnson, Gary 
Mary's All-American who led the Jayhawks to the Big 8 Conference title. Jill McFarlane, a North Decatur All-Star who went on to play with the Charlotte Sting. And women like Niall Ivey. She is the point guard for the Fever who's now made history at her alma mater twice, leading Notre Dame to their first national championship title and later returning as the first black head coach with the Fighting Irish. And so at every stage, women and men have shown why the ball's always in our court. Guys? Great stuff, Birchelle. Thank you so much. Many of the women that Birchelle just mentioned, plus dozens of other local basketball stars and coaches, were inducted tonight into the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. And right now on Fox59.com, you can find multi multiple media galleries of these Hoosier Hoop stars, state champs, and much more. And we'll continue to follow the Purdue men and IU women in their NCAA tournament runs as well. Central